Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph uh, this system of linear inequalities. And in this case, we have a system of three linear inequalities. So it's going to be very important that what we're going to graph each one of these separately and test the solutions for each one of these separately, then to kind of put together and look at it holistically as a whole of a system of inequalities. So the first one I'd like to kind of get started with, and I'm going to graph these. Again, when we're graphing inequalities, we like to um, a lot of times just re graph them as an equation. Um, because basically the process is going to be exactly the same. So when we look at graphing this equation, basically what we want to do is make sure we identify what the slope is and the y-intercept. So the slope in this case is going to be 3, and the y-intercept is going to be negative 1. Now remember when graphing in slope-intercept form, we always want to write the slope as a fraction. So if it's a whole number, I can just put it over 1. So now the first step to do is plotting the y-intercept, which is at negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Make a nice big dot, and there's my y-intercept. Now I'm going to follow the slope, which is positive 3 over positive 1, to find the next point, 1, 2, 3, on my graph, which will be 3 over 1. Now, before I connect my points, I want to go back to my inequality and determine if my boundary line is going to be a part of the solution or not. It's a part of the solution if it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, which in case this is. So to represent it being a part of the solution, I am going to graph a solid line. Now, for if it's... Um, if not a part of the solution, then we'll represent it as a dashed line, which we'll do in this case. Um, the next equation we want to graph is y equals 8. Now, we could do a table of values, but hopefully at this point you understand that when y equals 8, you understand that the y value is always equal to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it doesn't matter if x is 0, y equals 8. x is 1, y equals 8. x is negative 1, y equals 8. y always equals 8. So therefore, I'm going to have a horizontal line. But again, this one, since it's less than or equal to, is going to be a solid line. So it's going to look like that. And then the last equation that we have here is x plus y is greater than 1. Now, to write this in slope-intercept form, we'll subtract an x on both sides. And I get y, um, oh, let's do this as an equation, y equals negative x plus 1. So therefore, in this case, we, need to, we understand that the y-intercept is at positive 1. But my slope here is a negative. Well, really, that represents a negative 1 over 1, x plus 1. So when writing the slope as a negative, we just need to make sure we can either put the negative in the numerator or have the negative in the denominator. Either one will really work. In this case, I'll rewrite negative 1 over 1 as negative 1 over 1. So therefore, I'm going to go down 1. And then since my denominator is positive, I'm going to go to the right one. Now in this case, we go and look back at our inequality, and we see that our inequality is greater than, not greater or equal to. So therefore, this boundary line is not a part of the solution, so it's going to be dashed. All right, so now we have our system of inequalities, but we, have, we haven't touched our shading yet. So to do that, what we're going to do is go back to our inequalities, and now we're going to test each solution. And we need to choose a test point for each solution, and the best test point to always pick is 0, 0, as long as your boundary lines do not intersect your test point. Well, my test point 0, 0 is not intersected by any of them, so therefore, I am going to choose this test point which is 0, 0. And I'm going to plug in, remember 0, 0 is an x and a y coordinate. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y for each of my inequalities and determine if it's true or false for each inequality. So if you remember, the first inequality that we had is 0 is greater than or equal to negative 7. The first inequality that I graphed was right here. And in this case, you can see 0 is greater than negative 7, which is true. So since it's true and their test point is above the line, that means all points that are above this boundary line are going to be true. So instead of shading, I'm just going to put some arrows so I know where to shade once I've completed the boundary lines for all of them. The next one, I don't have an x to plug in, so I can just plug 0 in for uh, y. And again, that is true. So I go look at my test point. That is true for this boundary line, so I'm going to shade below. And then on the last one, um, I, that is this boundary line, I'll do 0 plus 0 is greater than 1. And that is false. So for this boundary line, you can see that it is false. So therefore, I am going to be shading above the line. So therefore, when you complete all the shading, you'll see that the only region that all of my inequalities are true for is this nice region right here. Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a system of linear inequalities. Thanks.